How you doing, folks? Eric Carlson again here. Uh, I am running for Congress in the 1st Congressional District in Illinois. This is number four in our video series uh, as I address the issues that are facing the voters here. Um, being that the 1st District is spread out from rural areas in the southwest all the way to the inner city uh, on the south side of Chicago, the, there's going to be different issues for different groups. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce around and all of these affect people in this district in one way or another. Um, and truthfully, all these issues affect everyone to, to a greater or lesser degree, but all this stuff affects everyone. So I hope you will uh, take a look at these videos. Um, this one's going to be a little long, uh, so you can, you can come back to it if you want, but I'll try and get through it as fast as I can to let you know where I stand and what my solutions are for things. So this is video number four, and this is about crime. This is something that we all wish we didn't have to deal with. Um, and it's, it's a big problem, more so in the city with uh, gangs, gun violence, and property crime. We see what's going on with these smash and grabs and everything. And Chicago has a history of gang violence and gun violence, unfortunately. So what I want to do is talk about the solutions to these problems. So as we saw our problems, property crime, gangs, and gun violence. Crime in general comes down, and this is going to be... I know it sounds oversimplified, but it really does have an impact when you break this down. The biggest single thing is jobs. Now, the thing is that a politician can't create jobs. Uh, a politician doesn't come in. Someone running for Congress can tell you all, all the great ideas they have. But what you're missing here is when Donald Trump came in and the Republicans uh, had Congress, they passed tax cuts. They secured the border. And they pass tax cuts, corporate tax cuts. What this does is this allows countries to, or excuse me, companies, corporations to expand, to create more jobs, and to raise higher wages. Because if your border is closed, your border is secure, and there's not illegals coming in, undercutting the job market, what that does is creates a tight job market, which means employers have to vie for new employees. So that means that wages go up, benefits go up, everyone does better for the people that are in the country. If you open this border and flood it in like what you're seeing now, you get a an underclass of unskilled workers that come in and take those basic jobs that don't allow, and this is where we get back to here, the gun violence that you see in the city of Chicago is basically all from gangs. Uh, the shootings and stuff that goes on, these are young men who don't have any way who either look that they don't have any way out or just being young men. I said this in a video before, young men get in trouble. If they're left to their own devices, if they don't have something to occupy their time and a mission or a goal in life, they will get in trouble. So how do you prevent that? Jobs. Okay. The way you do that is, again, going back to Donald Trump's uh, policies of cutting, cutting corporate taxes and securing the border. That will help create jobs. And to show you that, what happened under Donald Trump in the four years of Donald Trump, Black unemployment fell to its lowest level in history, in American history. Black youth unemployment fell to its lowest level in American history. Latino unemployment fell to its lowest level in American history. Female unemployment fell to its lowest level in over 50 years. So how does this translate? So let's look at a chart. When, or Excuse me, the numbers here, and these numbers are from the Chicago Tribune. Um, the murders in Chicago, the last year of Obama. Now, Donald Trump was elected in 2016. He didn't take office until January of 2017. The last year of Barack Obama, we had 765 murders. Donald Trump came in first year, uh, 2017, 653 murders. Next year, it dropped to 563. Next year, it dropped to 490. And you see it went back up to 774 in 2020. Now, why did that happen? What happened to us in 2020? We all got hit with what? COVID. I want you to look at this chart right here. Take a look at that. This is month by month. What went on? January, February. These are the murders in the city of Chicago. January, February, March, we went on lockdown. What happened? The warmer weather came. Everybody was locked down. So what was that? A lot of people lost their jobs, got put out of work by COVID with these lockdowns, had nothing to do. People weren't hiring. Businesses were worried. They laid people off. And what happened? You don't see that correlation? That's exactly what caused this. So you had this spike in the summertime. Okay. And that's why you get a number like that. So jobs directly re relate 
to the murder rate. You can get this down under 500, 490. If Donald Trump had been reelected and we didn't have COVID, now I'm not blaming anybody other than the Chinese for this because this, this is what happened. It escaped from the Chinese. That's for another video. But you see the correlation here, how this, if young men don't have jobs and things to improve their life and if they don't see any better way out, they're going to get into trouble. And that leads to crimes. A big problem here, gangs, is, and this is something that has to be looked at in the black community. And as, as I've told you in the other videos, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You have to look at this and you have to look at the family outcomes. The Democrat Party keeps wanting to give you things, give you handouts, give you uh, welfare and, and tell you that you're, you're, you know, that somebody's out to get you and you're being held and you can't get, have a better life. It's bullshit. That is absolute bullshit. The black family, if you go back to the 1950s and the 1960s, the black family was not what it is today. Most black families were married, had two parents in the, in, the, in the household, and you didn't have this crime back then. You had guns. Guns have been around in this country since its founding. Why didn't you have all that crime back then? It's simple. The breakdown of the family because the Democrat Party came in with these social welfare systems and basically took the father out of the home, made the father unnecessary. Um, this is something that uh, I'm going to talk about on the campaign trail. Hopefully I'll get to speak to uh, in some black churches and at some black gatherings where I can explain to them the way it's seen from outside. Because sometimes you can't see the problem when you're in the middle of it. Um, and if somebody comes along and just tells you, yeah, this is the reason that, that things are so bad for you, you're liable to say, well, yeah, okay, that makes sense, when it doesn't, when you, when you break this down and look at it. So how you do this is jobs. If a black family is secure and they have good paying jobs and they can get better housing, improve their neighborhoods, this is going to make things better. So this absolutely ties into um, when businesses leave. When you have high crime, Businesses leave neighborhoods like Inglewood, like Roseland. They abandon those areas because it's not a racist thing. It's it's strictly business, strictly money. If I, I'm not going to place my business in a place where my insurance rates are going to be through the roof because I have to worry about crime and arson and things like that and endangering my employees because uh, of being uh, you know armed robberies and things like this. People are just going to say, "Why do I need the headache? I'll go somewhere. I'll go three miles down the road." into a neighborhood where they're not breaking into it every night, breaking into my store. Um, and if these businesses leave, they take the jobs. They take the jobs, and then you get this cycle of now there's nothing for the young guys to do. So what do they do? They get in more trouble, create more problems. So th this is a, a terrible cycle. So you have to get out of this. So also when those businesses leave, not only do they take the jobs, they take the tax base. So the money that goes into the public coffers to pay for things like school and uh, your roads and trash collection and doing programs that will help these kids, uh, pre-kindergarten, uh, pre things like this, all that money leaves. It dries up. So then you get blight and despair. Now you get uh, buildings that are, are abandoned um, and people that, that just, there, there's nothing there. You've heard about in the city of Chicago, food deserts. Why do you have food deserts? Well, because it doesn't make economic sense for those businesses to place a store there. And again, that's not a racist policy. That's just, hey, if, if I'm in business, if I can't make money, I'm not going to be in business long. Okay? So you can change this. You can change these neighborhoods. You can absolutely change them, get businesses back in there by cutting down the crime. And how do you do that? You cut down the crime. We'll go into that over here. But then you bring back the businesses and jobs. But creating jobs is by bringing these policies back. The stuff that Joe Biden ended on day one. And you see where we're at. You see what happened because of it. Um, okay. So I also wanted to mention that Chicago has a, a gun ban since 1982. You wonder, you wonder where all these murders are? Um, for the folks in the city, there's probably, the way the district is drawn right now, there's probably far more guns in the suburbs and in the rural areas of the first district than there is in the city. The difference is, People aren't shooting each other. That's that's the fact. So you have to do a little inward uh, looking and a little soul searching and find out. And I'm willing to help you. We'll, we'll, 
the problem is fixable. The problem is absolutely fixable, but not with the same Democrat policies. They, they just keep getting, they placate you. They, they want their vote so they can get in power, so they can keep doing the same old thing, but they never give you solutions. They say, they, they come up with, with slogans, hope and change. Well, what has changed for you? Literally, what has changed for you in this city? Donald Trump to, said to you in 2016, give him a chance. What do you got to lose? I'm saying the same thing. It's two years. Two years. You haven't had a Republican in there in over 90 years in the first district. Um, and actually, that last Republican who was there was the first black, Oscar DePriest, was the first black congressman in the first district. And he was a Republican. So, again, if you don't think Republicans can manage in the 1st District or cannot represent black folks, I guarantee you, stop looking at the D's and the R's and the race and start looking at the policies and what people are going to do for you. All right? So we go on to crime here. Law enforcement. All right? Everybody, everybody's got an opinion on this. Um some strong, there's there's a lot of problems, especially here in, in Illinois. Um, the prosecutor and the state's attorney. If we have profs, prosecutors, uh, Kim Fox right now is the state's attorney in Cook County. If we have people who don't prosecute crimes, there's no deterrent. There's absolutely no deterrent to the crime. You know, this has to go hand in hand with the jobs part of it. Um, if you do step out of line, there has to be a consequence. Um, unfortunately, you're not getting that from... You know, again, Cook County and Chicago is run entirely by Democrats. Your mayor, your police chief, your county board president, your state's attorney, they're all Democrats. They're all, all Democrats, and this is what you're getting. Um, law enforcement on the police side. Uh, I know a lot of people have a problem with Chicago police. Chicago police have a hard job, and it's easy. They're human, and it's easy to get jaded when you see bad stuff, when most of your interactions during the course of a day are going to bad things, shooting, crime, domestic battery, things like this, that wears on a person's soul. And it can make someone jaded and it can make someone rough. And that can come off as, as not professional or not caring to other people, people that, that are just trying to go about and live, live their daily lives. So... The thing you have to do here is the, the folks in the city need to learn to trust the police, but they can only do this by opening up and working with the police. These codes of silence and stuff and don't say it, don't talk to the police. I get it. You know, you don't, you don't want problems, but you need to let them get rid of this for you and you need to help them get rid of that. So you can have a better future, so you can get the businesses coming back in your neighborhoods, so you can get the jobs coming back in and defeat this cycle. That's what you need to do. Break this cycle right now. So the police, the problem with the police, and the police have many problems, but I'm going to tell you the biggest one is training. People seem to, and especially outside the city, people think that police are highly trained. They're not. They go through the police academy and they're required to do a minimum number of hours per year in training. But the police are not trained the way they should. Coming from a special operations background, and having a lot of friends that actually teach and instruct and own companies that teach tactics and how to uh, stress shooting, things like this. If you watch videos of the Chicago police, there was a video uh, not too long ago where there had to be 20 cops and they all had their guns drawn from different directions on a couple in a car and they were all yelling at the same time. This is just an example. Um, that is absolutely not the way you do things. I picked out 25 things right off the bat that they were doing wrong, and they didn't know they were doing them wrong. Um, Chicago police need to be trained better, and this is this isn't faulting them. They're going out there and they're doing a very rough job, and the training would benefit them, benefit the people of the city. That's where your money should be going. When these people are talking about uh, cutting cutting money to the police and defunding the police, that's the most idiotic thing you could possibly do. You need the police. The police have to be there. That's the only thing that keeps anarchy away from the tour in, in the worst of times. Training and professionalism. Now, this is my own personal pet peeve with, with some Chicago cops is professionalism. You know, that, you know, you need to get rid of that cop attitude that, you know, that, you know, it's, it's us against the world. 
It's not. If you start working with people, that'll come back to you tenfold. If you start, you know, the uh, a big thing is part of that is community policing. I mean, getting out of the car and walking the beat. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's old and old school and you, you know, you can't respond to things as fast because you're not in the car and everything. You, you can still have patrol units, but having people on the street walking into these stores, and I know they've done, they've had programs like this and they've tried that stuff, but obviously they're not doing it to a point where um, it's, it's being as effective as it should be. So folks, you got to learn to trust the police. Police have to trust the community and you guys have to work together. That's, you know, Absolutely. Last thing I'm going to touch on on this is something, that, an idea that I've had for a long time is police auxiliary. Police auxiliary would be civilians um, that were military veterans, honorably discharged, that would go through a mini police academy and they would be able to back the police up. They would be allowed to carry, they would be trained with firearms, they would be given uh, body armor to patrol their neighborhoods if they wanted to, if they, they, they could help in so many ways. We, uh, with radios where they would have direct communication with the police, but also they know the streets better. If I live on my block, I know everyone on my block. If I get kids coming down trying to sell drugs on that block, I'm going to call the local uh, the cops. They're going to come there, and I'm going to go down there with them. We're going to talk to these kids, explain to them, or arrest them, or what, what have you. But the cops can't be everywhere. If you have more eyes and more people willing to step up, that's going to make the situation all that much better. So this would be a proposal that any honorably discharged veterans would be allowed to become an auxiliary police officer. Also, it would be nice to have under the tutelage of retired Chicago cops to kind of lead these units uh, throughout the neighborhoods in the city of Chicago. This is some, there, there's a lot of black veterans in some of these bad neighborhoods that, that would absolutely, they know the kids, they know where they're coming up from. They know what it was like to grow up in that neighborhood. They're going to relate to them a lot better than uh, a white cop who lives up on the north side. Um, they just are. You know, it, it's it's common sense stuff, but this can be done. And th this ties the community into the police. So that's it for this video here. Um, again, if you have any questions, comments, please uh, let me know. You can contact me via the website or any of the social media sites. Again, my name is Eric Carlson, and I'm running for Congress in the 1st District in Illinois. Thank you.